Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at energy equation. Previously, we have looked at continuity equation that came from conservation of mass. And right now, from the conservation of energy, we are going to be deriving a simplified version of the energy equation that we can use to solve engineering problems. For conservation of energy, we already know that Q dot minus W dot is equal to d over dt integration of a system this is energy times rho times dv v is volume and e is the combination of a few types of energy which is the kinetic energy this is v square over 2 plus potential energy which is gz and also the specific internal energy and we note that as u and from the Reynolds transport theorem, we know that we can represent conservation of energy in terms of control volume instead of control system. So the equation for conservation of energy in terms of control volume looks something like this. Q dot minus W dot equal to D over DT, but this time you integrate it over control volume. This is energy times rho times DV plus integration of control surface and this is rho times energy times n dot v times dA. Now our objective now is to take this equation and turn it into a more simplified version so that we can use it for engineering problems. Right now the equation seems to be a little bit complex because we have Q and we have W. W is work and there are many types of work that we need to resolve in order to solve this equation. And some of this heat and work can be considered as losses because we are now focusing on fluid mechanics where we don't really consider the heat transfer which is Q. I believe that you're going to pay more attention to Q or heat transfer when you learn thermodynamics. So later you will see that we will regard this Q simply as losses. And for W dot which is the rate of work, we can actually split this W dot into a few components since there are a few components that we can consider or not consider when solving the equation. Okay, so those components are W dot equal to integration of control surface, this is P or pressure times the velocity that is normal to the surface of the control surface times dA plus w dot s plus w dot shear plus w dot i. Okay, now let's take a look at what each of these terms means. Alright, so first of all, this term is what we call the flow work. The flow work is the result of the force that's moving the fluid into and out of the control volume. Next, we have w s which is called the shaft work. And shaft work is the result of any rotating device that is inside that control volume. For example, you may have pump and you may have turbine. All right, so that is W dot S. Next, we have W dot shear. And W dot shear occurs when there is a moving boundary on the fluid. For example, when you have belt. And finally, we have W dot I, which is associated with a control volume that sometimes we need to move according to the engineering problem. So W dot I relates to the control volume that is moving. Now, when we have this definition of work, what we need to do next is to put this equation inside our original energy equation. So this equation will become, I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit longer, but bear with me. So this is going to be Q dot minus, so W is now WS minus W dot shear minus W dot I. And if you notice, I'm going to put every component of the work to the left hand side except the flow work. For the flow work, I'm going to put it on the right hand side of this equation. So this becomes d over dt e times rho times dv plus, now I'm going to have e plus p over rho 
normal dot v d a. Does it make sense? Because this term is the integration of control surface and this is similarly integration of control surface. So you can actually bundle them up together. That's why I put that into the right hand side of the equation. Now let's see what can we do next. We also know that E is actually comprising of these three terms. Okay, so now it's time to put them together inside this equation. So this stays the same, which is Q dot minus W dot S minus W dot shear minus W dot I equal to D over DT. This is still the integration over control volume, but E is now V square over two plus GZ plus U times rho dv plus now we have e v square over 2 plus gz plus u plus p over rho and dot v da and i think i'm missing something there's got to be another rho outside this bracket here so it will cancel out okay so this will also have rho here that is outside the bracket. Okay, so now that we have everything inside one equation, it's time to start to reduce it into what we need and what we don't need. That is because for engineering application that is focused on fluid mechanics problem, there are a few terms that is inside this equation that we can consider them as losses because the value is so little compared to the magnitude of are the terms and that we can simply assume them to be zero. And the terms here that we can consider as losses is Q and anything that is associated with specific internal energy. These are what we call the unusable form of energy. All right. So if I write it here, losses will become minus Q dot plus d over dt, control volume, this is u rho dv, plus u, and I think I'm missing the integration sign here, this is control surface, so this is u rho n dot v da, and probably I'm missing it here also, this is control surface, and this is your integration of control surface. And now when we have considered that these three terms contributes to losses, we can rewrite our equation and now it becomes minus W dot S minus W dot shear minus W dot I equal to D over DT integration inside control volume. Now we are left with V square over 2 plus GZ times rho DV plus integration of control surface v square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho rho n dot v da plus losses isn't it and losses is equal to these terms and this equation although it's a little bit long will become the base of our equation when we solve the engineering problems. Of course, after this, we are going to make a few assumptions that, for example, we've made during the conservation of mass equation, we can assume that the flow is steady, then the equation will become less complicated, and we can also assume that the flow is uniform, then the equation will become even simpler. So now, let's assume that the flow is steady and uniform. And again, if the flow is steady, it means that the flow doesn't change with time. So almost exactly that this term will become zero. And uniform flow means that at a cross section of the pipe, for example, we can assume that the velocity of the flow is the same. And if the flow has no shear work, all right, remember that the shear work is because of the moving boundary and that if the flow has fixed control volume right so this also becomes zero so we can assume this and this to be 
also zero. And if the flow has only one inlet and one exit, for example, you have a flow in pipe, this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2 and this is your control volume okay and the flow is moving from left to right so this flow has only one inlet and one exit and this equation simply becomes this is minus w dot s equal to we're gonna take this right and that becomes rho 2 v2 a2 multiply with these terms but now it's at point 2 because point 2 is positive, right? So this is V2 square over 2 plus GZ2 plus P2 over rho 2. And this is going to be minus rho 1 V1 A1 V1 square over 2 plus GZ2 plus P2 over rho 2. And if you still remember, we have m dot, which is equal to rho 2 v2 a2. And remember that we assume that this flow is steady. So rho 2 v2 a2 must equal to rho 1 v1 a1. And therefore, we can simplify this equation further. And if I change this to m dot, and I'm going to bring it to the left. So we have here minus w dot s over m dot equal to v2 square minus v1 square over 2 and I also want to divide everything to the right with g so this is going to be n dot g and this is going to be g as well plus p2 over rho 2g minus p1 over rho 1g plus z2 minus z1 and remember that we still have the losses here, okay? And these losses will be represented as, it's got to be here, so this is going to be losses. And at this equation, we're going to denote losses as plus HL. And HL means head loss. And head loss here, if you trace it back to our original equation, our head loss is actually U2 minus u1 divided by g plus q dot over mg. And sometimes head loss is also written as k times v square over 2g, where k is called the loss coefficient. And don't worry about this yet because you're going to be looking at it later. So now what we have here is a simplified version of the original energy equation and we have got this equation because we assume that the flow is steady and uniform. So you need to be careful here. Whenever you use this simplified equation, the flow has to satisfy these two conditions which are steady and uniform. Now what do you think will happen to the equation if we also assume that the shaft work is zero? Now the equation gets even more simple where this is simply zero. And if you write again this equation and you rearrange it a little bit, it becomes V2 square over 2G plus P2 over gamma 2 plus Z2 equal to V1 square over 2G plus P1 over gamma 1 plus Z1. Okay, now this is even more simple. And if you notice, even though this is energy equation, so let me write it here, this is energy equation for steady and uniform flow with no shaft work, okay? And if you notice, this equation looks very similar with Bernoulli equation. Now, even though it looks similar, we've obtained Bernoulli equation when we consider a streamline. 
But we obtain this energy equation when we consider two sections with one inlet and one exit. So for this, you need to be careful, okay? And of course, when you are dealing with incompressible fluids such as water, then gamma 2 and gamma 1 is similar. So I can actually erase this 2 and 1 here. So you end up with this as your final equation. Now that is when we assume that shaft work is zero. But quite often we find that there is shaft work involved in equation because shaft is one of the many ways to transfer energy into and out of the control volume. For example, if you have a pump, okay, and then of course, pump is supplying energy into the fluid, isn't it? So your control volume is actually receiving energy from outside. So if I write this equation again, and this time I'm gonna put one on the left. So this is V1 squared over 2G plus P1 over gamma plus Z1 equal to V2 squared over 2G plus P2 over gamma plus Z2. And if I have a pump, and of course this pump is supplying energy into the fluid. So I'm gonna put my pump power or pump head here on the left hand side of the equation. So HP or pump head is basically W dot S over M dot G. This is what we've cancelled before, right? Okay, but now it is represented as HP or pump head. Why do we call this head? Because if you notice, this has the dimension of length, okay? For example, Z is the elevation and the unit for Z is length. So the unit for all the terms here is length. So remember, if you add energy into the volume, then HP is going to be on the left hand side. But what if you have a turbine and you know a turbine extract energy from the fluid, isn't it? So the turbine or HT should be on the right hand side of this equation. I hope you notice by now that if a control volume is receiving energy from anything, you should add the term on the left hand side of this equation. But if the control volume is losing energy, for example, when we have turbines, so the turbine head must be on the right hand side of this equation. And again, if you want to include it, you can also put here H losses, right? And H losses is kv square over 2g. And let's say that you use this equation in order to find HP or HT, then when you have the turbine head, if you want to convert the turbine head into turbine power, you can use this equation, which is W dot T is equal to M dot G HT times eta T, or you can also use gamma times Q times HT times eta T. And eta T is, of course, the turbine efficiency. Okay, and again, gamma is the rho times G, Q is the volume flow rate, HT is the turbine head that you get from here, and again, eta T is the turbine efficiency. But what if you need the pump power when you have HP? So pump power, W dot P is equal to M dot G H P divided by eta P or it is also equal to gamma Q H P divided by eta P. And of course, eta P is the pump efficiency. And that is how you get the turbine power and pump power when you solve the energy equation. And one more thing, because previously, in using this equation, we assume that the flow is steady and uniform. But what happens if the flow is still steady, but it is non-uniform? For this, you need to make a little adjustment in order to fit the non-uniformity into this equation. And it's not much, actually. And the equation looks something like this. You have what you call the kinetic energy correction factor. And this is for non-uniform flow. 
Okay, and the kinetic energy correlation factor, the symbol is alpha. And how do you get this alpha? It's simply equal to the integration of V cubed times dA over the average velocity cubed times area. So if you have a flow with velocity profile like this, okay, so V bar is simply the average velocity flux of that particular cross section. And when you have this correction factor, it's only applied at the kinetic energy equation. So if I copy again this equation, so this will be HP plus V1 square over 2G plus P1 over gamma plus Z1 equal to V2 square over 2G plus P2 over gamma plus Z2 plus HT. And the only modification that I need to do is to put alpha here and V1 is the average velocity. And same goes with the right hand side of the equation. You put alpha here and V2 is actually the average velocity at cross section at point 2. And of course, if you want to put HL here, you can also do it as well. Right? So this will be your final equation when the flow is not uniform. Okay, everyone, I think this video is getting a little bit longer than usual. So please try to derive this equation for steady and uniform and also for non-uniform flow from the original equation that we get from the Reynolds transport theorem before. In the next video, we are going to be talking about a few examples so that you can familiarize yourself with this equation. Okay, everyone, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.